I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, so we are going into, I need to move to go into executive session. Um, so the purposes of um, employee contracts. So move. Second. Oh, David. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Sorry. Hi, Emily. Hi, Ryan. Hi. 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 Um, we're going to add, um, I'm move, I would like to move to add an agenda item um, to accept the resignation of Matt Pathasarthy um, as a member of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Um, and we'll add that to number item number 15. Okay. Um, so school community session. Um, recognition. Recognition. So, um, this week, the week of April 8th, April 14th, is the 60th anniversary of the National Library Week with the theme Librarians, Libraries Lead, and Librarians Lead. Um, and we have three of our librarians here today uh, from three of our schools. Uh, we have Don Fiorelli, Jill Fayen, Sandra Bissier, Colson, Jeffrey, Island Avenue. Thank you for coming. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you. Your Thank you. Yeah. It's my favorite. <laughs> we like uh, to see it every year. Thinking and <laughs> so, so a little background. Uh, 60th anniversary started in 1958. In the 1950s, this this is a really great little nugget. Research showed Americans were spending less time on books and more on radios, televisions, and musical instruments. I wish my kids would do more time on musical instruments. Um, Concerned that Americans were reading less, the ALA and the American Book Publishers formed a nonprofit citizens organization called the National Book Committee in 1954. Their goals were ambitious. They ranged from encouraging people to read in their increasing leisure time to improving incomes and health and developing strong and happy family life. So books can do that. Um, in 1957, uh, National Library Week began based on the idea that once people were motivated to read, they would support and use libraries. So the first theme was Wake Up and Read in 1958, and now we are in, 50, 60 years later, Libraries Lead. Our libraries are vibrant in our schools, right? Circulation is off the charts. The way you have supported the curricular changes is something I haven't seen in the six different districts I've been in. So I personally thank you as superintendent um, we have huge challenges in front of us, ahead of us. Um, the way you have done um, an incredible job trying to read through your collections and, and really look at those collections, keep them alive for kids and very vibrant and really tightly aligned to the curriculum that comes out of Gail's office. I can't thank you enough. The teachers very often comment, I'm in a nonfiction unit, and oh my god, and Jill was great, she brought me this and made this. So really, it's been outstanding work. And I thank you so much. So thank you. I right, thank you. I know thank Gail you. Gail thank feels you. equally appreciative for the I work do. you're doing. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yeah. We all thank Don, you. Don, you want to show them what you brought with you? <laughs> oh, it's embarrassing. This what did you bring? Yeah. Yeah. That's They're so sleeping with these machines right now. Travel. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, I got nervous. Do I have to eat? I'm doing a lot of work. I'm wearing kind of late. Maybe I'm going to stop and shop. Yeah, yeah. Come here, Parker. Thank you, and on behalf of the board, we are also grateful for the work that you do, the important work that you do in the district for the teachers, for our children. Um, it's a special place to be in the li all those libraries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we have our students back. 
We do. We're we do. so happy we missed you. Blew us off. I know. I'm sorry. We had tech <laughs> meetings. <laughs> Guys, we're a little busy. A little, just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just giving public participation. Thank we you. Did. I'm yes. so sorry. Um, are there any members of the public? Hearing that? We missed you. <laughs> We're glad you're back. The play was awesome. Yes. Especially Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> you. That accent was. What? I was like, oh, that took me Are you so whistling long. at your sister? All what? over the house, whistling at your sister? Yeah. Should you come when you whistle anymore? No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so what's been happening recently, students are getting ready for April break, vacation, that's a big thing. A lot of kids are thinking towards that because there's a lot of exams right now and other things. And we have a pep rally this Friday. Um, our spring musical just ended, as you guys mentioned. And the next thing for kids that do theater is um, we have a thing called STAR, which is student directed and student acted. And they perform like a play on some kind of like social issue regarding school so we're going to be working on that um, in the next couple months and then um, we also had the career fair which was a big success um, a couple I think it was like a week or two ago mm -hmm. and um, there was a lot of kids from both hand high school and other kids from Guilford and Clinton high schools and there was a lot of um, professionals there that were able to provide um, contact info and um, students can contact these people for all sorts of things like shadowing or internships. Yeah, like it's on Naviance now, so everyone who is there can go on Naviance and have all the contact information. So if they like missed it, and so just to the public, you can go and <clears throat> see the businesses. There were, I think, like over 70 businesses there. Right? Yeah. It was or individuals, well maybe. Yes, yeah. 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 there was a lot of people. Yeah. And, and Paulson and Guilford and Guilford Middle School, yeah. I mean, it was a really good joint. There was, there. Yeah. yeah, even like not, it wasn't just high school, it was like, it was like a lot of middle schoolers too, yeah. which is like, they want to get into the, like, internships, like Ryan said. Okay, so <clears throat> now on to a little bit uh, kind of different, like it's like a totally different thing, is, um, so, as you know, on March 14th, we had a walkout in our school walkout. We didn't actually walk outside because that would have been unsafe. <laughs> but um, we had, it was like a student run, a completely student run thing where we decided what would be a, kind of like a better use of that time to like really make it impactful and meaningful. So we had um, a, anyone who didn't want to participate was allowed to go into the library. And anyone who um, wanted to participate, there was at the beginning half, there was a, um, assembly in the gym and then there was a lion at 10 o'clock because that and for three minutes which is how long it takes to buy a gun in some states and that was the significance of the lion and then afterwards you can go into the cafeteria to either write letters to the children in Florida or the families and like really give support or to your to the state legislators to try to restrict you know to help with gun laws and from that group of people a club has emerged um, uh, it's called violence to voices in our school to kind of I don't know, um, keep that idea and that like passion going for, you know, a couple more, for longer than just that. So <clears throat> they have some stuff on their agenda and they asked me to talk about it to the board. Okay, so first of all, they're having a, um, a rally over April break, the Friday, April 20th, and they're going to be on the green for anyone who wants to attend. I have, if anyone wants it, I have their agenda right here of everything they're going to do during the rally and during the thing. It's kind of like, it's on a walkout day, but because it's break, they just are having a rally that day. And I have that information for anyone who wants it. And then they um, will be setting up more PAW meetings to get more gauge from our student body to see what else we can be doing. And they're writing letters to senators, and it's like a group of, like, kids who really want to keep this going and don't, don't just want it to end with the walkout. Um, so we had, yeah, pause after that to kind of follow up on it. And we also had a code yellow the other week in hand. And we just wanted to kind of, uh, Ms. Sanitary just asked me to kind of like, you know, talk about that and how um, the threat was realized by 7.18 in the morning. And then it was, um, the identity was known by 7.25 and the child was in the principal's office by 7.26. So it was kind of fast timing, but we stayed in the code yellow all throughout first period so that it could be dealt with. So I just wanted to let that out to the public as well. And 
Yeah, that's it. Kind of a little more somber report this, this week, but you know, those were things that happened in our school as well. So I have, yeah, if anyone wants it, I have those. I only made eight copies because the number of <laughs> board members has been fluctuating lately. <laughs> Sorry, I, I really did not know how many Thanks copies. Thanks for that, Emily. No, I didn't. I'll walk out and now you can have You can have mine. Good times. Okay. Thank you. We did miss you. We'll get you back. Um, superintendent's report. Okay, um, I can put the, um, the graphic again of the balance scorecard up on the board. I also have hard copies here of the memo that went home to the board. <laughs> yes, so. So for, um, for some board members, you're probably looking and saying again. <laughs> I think I just heard justice. Yeah. But for, for the, the greater good and some other board members who are newer to the group, um, we began this work really in earnest six years ago when we did some revisioning for the district. Um, and in your document is a district vision statement, which was the result of a, a series of education summits in the community. About 50 or so folks attended those. Um, we invited many of them, um, and I have a list of those folks if, if any board members are interested in that. That was a while back. Um, but the vision statement with an embedded mission um, was created and adopted by the Board of Ed in, in August of that summer of 2013, about, about a year into that work. Uh, just following there, uh, about the following year, we began to develop uh, belief statements, which we call theory of action, theory of change, and that was done by the board in <clears throat> December of 2014. The work of the board and the district was really organic at that point, and at some time around 2014, 2015, we began to really get the feeling that we probably should start to formalize our work a little bit more, and then I believe it was in 2016 we started presenting to the planning committee on this concept of um, an alternative way to strategic planning, which should be a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more targeted. Um, the way I like to say is that there are, for individuals and for people, we have musts and we have shoulds in our lives. Uh, we always take care of our musts. Um, and the shoulds, you know, the ones that are really, really important, we make them musts. So we try to take what we believe here is um, a good summary of what our must ought to be to realize the district vision at this point in time. This document ought to evolve over time. Um, it ought to inform the work of the administrative team and the teachers and the whole system. And it has to really begin with the board comfortable with the stakeholder outcomes, which are on the beginning of that strategy map. And that strategy map can be found um, bottom of the page says three. And I could project it to be easier for the board. Uh, but the strategy map it looks like this. So if you just want to imagine a line below those first three bubbles where it says stakeholders, you just drew a line right there below them. Those first three bubbles are really what will inform the work of the administrative team, the teachers, and the district. Um, what we would what we'd be obligated to for stakeholders, for students and parents, for the community, and for the board. For students and parents, that we will guarantee an educational experience that's engaging and offers choices for the future. For the community, uh, a system that increases the value of the community, and for the board, that we are leaders in the field, we're forward thinking in a high achieving district. So those are kind of the statements that we, we hold to, and then we had some measures that we created within that in the scorecard itself, and those measures can be found on the next page, bottom of that page, we say page four. And you can see uh, the objective would be S1, S2, and S3 in the far left column. And in the middle, we have measures there that we either have at our fingertips or are developing. Um, and it's, it's a way that we would capture performance of the system overall. Everything below that are process-based work 
that the admin team would own the responsibility for, and those measures and initiatives within there. Through quarterly reports to the board, we'd give updates on that. But really, um, the governance body, the Board of Education, we really want to be comfortable that the board is comfortable with those objectives and those measures of time. So that's something we would hope that the board would take action to formally adopt, because we're, we're ready to launch. We're doing some of this work already, in earnest. Um, and some of the work is in the queue. So I'm going to pause for a second and not get too mired in, in, in the process here in the document and, and really give time for especially newer board members if they have any questions or, or comments um, on, on this document. Emily? Yeah. Not, not at this moment. Okay. When is this one talking about? There really, you know, is not a timeline. Katie and I just talked about mm -hmm. trying to kind of get this through at this point because it's been in the queue for a while, but for my purposes, I don't want to take anything out of the oven until it's cooked. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to make sure the nine board members are comfortable, you know, with this, and I would be happy to do individual meetings, small group meetings, you know, whatever, whatever it takes to get clarity there. The admin team has been working with this for the better part of a year now, really, um, as far as this level of specificity. Probably since last summer, would you say a little bit before that? Ryan worked with us last spring. Feels like yeah. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. 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 I started would say that least... meeting at Ryerson, so whenever that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's evolved quite a bit since then. Yeah. A lot of iterations. Yeah. I would say next meeting or two. No, I wouldn't want to go any longer than it felt like me to adopt the framework yeah. of this and, yeah. and knowing that there are initiatives that may change. I think that's what's um, probably most important to take away is that. This is a, a document that will evolve over time as we um, achieve work, as we you know, change a target based on an emerging priority, um, but the overall emphasis of those stakeholder outcomes is something that we certainly want to hold true to. And we may find that a measure that we created isn't giving us valuable information, so let's go back to the table. Um, I think the admin team, we all kind of agree that this is something that if we are able to come to the board with our lessons learned and what we're going to do about it, as opposed to kind of a rank and sort of this is good, this is bad, you know, we would want to have a feedback loop with the board of this really was awesome and this fell flat and we have to fix this and here are some ideas and kind of propose that to the board. So that's kind of where we are. Can I ask why? I get that the measures for the stakeholders are kind of like initiatives, right? Sort of, some of them are, but like there aren't any initiatives against the stakeholders. No, they're, they're not for a reason, um, and I'll tell you why. That's the only part of the, um, the entire um, scorecard happy that are considered outcomes. So they're bottom line in our field, a mission-based organization that can loosely be construed to an outcome. We can't point to a profit loss margin. We can't point to uh, you know our stock price up and down, our revenue. Um, we tried to come up with outcome measures that we felt were at least our first stab trying to honor the work that we're doing. So the S1, S2, S3 are the outcomes. Yeah, yes, yes. So just taking a look, if we could stay there for, for just a minute, I can explain our thinking on this. Um, the first outcome is around um, S1. Dial back for a second. S1 is for students and parents that the educational experience is engaging and offers choice for the future. Um, we're looking at graduation rates from college as one measure, not high school, college, and we can track that information through the College Board. Right. And then we're also looking at an, an alumni study. We have a vendor lined up. As soon as this is approved, the group is called that we work with, I've worked in the past called Amplitude. They do a nice job of two-year, four-year, and six-year cohorts out of hand graduating. And we would develop uh, uh, surveys and focus group information and questions around that. So specifically with this outcome, was your education at the end? Did it offer a voice, uh, from, from Madison, excuse me, did it offer choices for the future? Was it engaging? And kind of how are they performing? The next outcome is around community. And you know, one of them is kind of out there, the number of legacy families. We thought that was an interesting data point. It may prove to be nothing for us, and we may move on from it. Uh, but certainly some parent satisfaction survey coupled with focus groups we thought would be helpful. 
Um, and then we talked about target community feedback survey. So identifying segments of the community, the Rotary Club, um, realtors, um, you know, youth sports commissioners, and so forth. So what value are the schools adding to the community from their perception? We may need a professional to run those focus groups. We can try it. Um, but we thought it would be an interesting measure for us to track over time as well. And the final is, is probably the hardest when it comes to student performance data. If we're going to place an emphasis on any student testing, we would prefer it to be the terminal scores of our district, which would be our end of the kind of career, um, whether they're SAT, ACT, our early college, our AP scores, and then the unweighted GPA and uh, a, a performance against our 21st century capacities, which are the assessments we develop internally that are a measure of those capacities in critical thinking, creative thinking, and so forth. So we're going to be developing as a heavy lift. Gail's shaking as I talk about this because we have to develop a system to capture that data and then report that out. So those for us, to get back to Happy's question, we would look at those as outcomes in, in a mission-based organization, which is what we are, as opposed to a private sector bottom line organization. And then everything below that are process-based measures for us. Um, some we feel really good about, some were a bit of a stretch, and that's why we're going to go through this process of revisiting it. Um, but I think the alignment of initiatives, measures, and the objectives helps breathe clarity into the work of the district, especially around our strategy, overall strategy. I have a uh, two-part question um, in terms of the scorecard itself. Mm -hmm. when information becomes available for all of the items. How often would the board see the scorecard? How often would we yeah. get a new scorecard? Yeah. And how often would the items on the scorecard be revisited in terms of what's on there and what's not? Yeah. So each measure has its own measurement detail page and within there it articulates in black and white how frequent we capture the measure is it twice a year, is it annually, is it biannually? We won't do an alumni study every year. It just wouldn't make sense to do it silly every year. Um, we may stagger some of them, so it's every other year for the alumni study, every other year for the parent satisfaction survey. Uh, the process outcomes as well, some of them are more frequent. Um, P3, the instructional method assessment, that's every trimester, Gail, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we would be looking at every trimester, which is a lot more frequent. I would anticipate that we would give updates to the board probably three times a year. I mean, if, if you know more were requested, we could, but probably beginning, middle, end of the year, um, and whatever measures we have that are alive, we would report on. Okay. Makes and, sense. Yeah. And how about the how about looking at what measures are used or not used? How often would you anticipate that that should be reopened? About um, the value of the measures. I'm not sure I understand. When we look at the measures over time. Yeah. You know, you might eventually say, well, yeah. that one's not quite right, or we want to add this, or yeah. something like that. So would there be a regular process for revisiting that as part of the proposal? Absolutely. I think that, on an, well, we've been advised on an annual basis to, you know, with a consultant we worked with, to kind of look at those measures. Um, for some of them, if we're doing them biannually, then we would need to have a few more repetitions. But for some of these that we're doing much more frequently, I think annually is, is a pretty healthy way to do it. I would suggest that it would be useful to codify that as part of the proposal sure. to say, this is what we're going to see when. Okay. Anybody else? I, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so you have parent satisfactory satisfaction survey. Do you have any sort of exit interview for students as they depart? We haven't included that, and that's a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, that really is. Can we consider something? Yeah, absolutely. Here? Absolutely. Yeah, Gail, that may be something tomorrow that we talk about. We're meeting with our admin council tomorrow to review this again, so, yeah. Um, I'm yeah. guilty this time. I know we all kind of pay more attention or less attention to things until something hits us. But yeah. uh, Go ahead. Um, I, I would like to take another crack at maybe recrafting the stakeholder um, titles mm -hmm. uh, before we finalize this. Sure. And those statements, and, and there is no ego involved, those statements was the admin team in think tank mode, yeah. you know, trying to say, what do you think the board may feel would be the statements that would be the outcomes that parents would want? 
in a singular statement, uh, the community and the Board of Ed. We are wide open, and that could be something if we want to revisit through either the full board, through a subcommittee, um, we're wide open for suggestions. That, that is probably what we feel strong, is that we need the board to feel confident and firm about. So what will be the vehicle? Do you want me to just get those into you as a suggestion, or? Uh, why don't, yeah, I mean, if we wanted to vote on this framework for the next meeting, I would prefer that we put it off to, I know you said no later than May 8th, if we can do the May 8th, okay. um, and then get that feedback for the next board meeting, if you want to centralize it with you, and Great. you can give me the feedback. We have a planning committee meeting before then too, I know we've run this through planning, yeah. so maybe we can, can run it through planning next time. If the board's okay with that, with the planning committee, I would think it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Laura, can you make sure on the planning agenda we put that to? Mm -hmm. The 24th? Uh, you're not here for the 24th? No, no, no. You can do that without me. Okay, we got permission from the chair. 24th? Yeah, 24th. You're up. Yeah, okay. Okay. okay, other matters. <coughs> okay, uh, a couple of others. I updated the board quickly. Uh, I just want to go public with a couple of those updates. First, our kindergarten enrollment. Uh, we got these numbers at the end of the day today. 125 registered right now, and we have 138 projected. So uh, we're well on our path to filling those numbers over the summer. It wouldn't surprise me if we exceed them, and maybe coming and saying we need another kindergarten teacher. Um, but I just want to put it in context, 138, even if that gets 20 more, we're graduating 300 kids um, in, in a couple months. So those numbers are pale in comparison to our current cohorts, yeah. and they certainly are in line with the enrollment decline that's been projected. Although usually we pick up more kids per we do. grade. We do. But yeah, and we it's will. still going to be very shy at yeah. 300 number. Yeah. Is kindergarten registration going on? We had um, a very active period, uh, Violet. We, we hosted in here over a two-day period, and it was pretty active. We got most of our registrations done then. Recent. Yeah, in March. Yes. In March. Okay. Yeah, in yeah. March. Yeah. 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 It was cute. Yeah, we put little steps on the floor. And kind of <laughs> it was cute. It is, yeah. Okay. Uh, a couple other items. Um, I received a phone call. I let the board know from uh, Shoreline Times about OLM. And uh, Katie and I were at the board of selectmen. Well, Bruce is here, board of selectmen. We had the board of selectmen meeting yesterday. Um, and OLM certainly has some ideas about what they would like to do for their school. Um, we made it clear that once we vacate the building uh, of Island Avenue, we have no purview over that building, and that's a town matter. Um, we hadn't really heard of any urgency to set up a date to turn the building over to the town, because our focus has been on transitioning 3,000 kids and making sure that they sort of transition smoothly. But if there is a sense of urgency on that um, from the town side, uh, you know, I said at the Board of Selectmen meeting, I think you agreed, that we'll work with the town if there's something that they need for on our end. Um, but you know, that said, our focus really right now is on the plan of transitioning our kids from six schools to five, which every you know, just about every task we've laid out, we're on target for right now. So um, that's one. Um, number two, um, in the vein of contracting the district, we're going to send uh, a brief update to parents on a variety of topics um, tomorrow that you notify. <coughs> Excuse me, one of which will be the reconfiguration of the district and some broad timelines of what we're looking at for. I would think parents are most concerned about redistricting and bus routes and so forth. The reality is it's, there's not much for redistricting with the island community because they're all going to Jeffrey. Um, it will really be for the Jeffrey community in which we have certain neighborhoods that will be redistricted to, to Ryerson. And we're probably talking uh, around 60 to 70 students, I would imagine. Uh, right now, the numbers project about 355, 365 for Jeffrey, 260, 270 or so for Ryerson. And those numbers go down uh, because the enrollment goes down after the first year. Uh, any yeah, questions? I have a question. I mean, we can talk about it when we get to this, but, and maybe you haven't gotten to it yet, but when we do the fourth and fifth grade, does that stick with the Brown start time? Um, at this point, we haven't discussed that right. at all, but we assume that we still would continue with three bus waves. Yeah. 
So three bus waves would be so an elementary, a middle, yeah. which would be Bulls and Brown. Right. Yeah. So, um, talk about the planning again. Well, no, oh, I talked to Charlie. Oh, yeah. Right when we renamed the school. Yes. <laughs> um, and the last one I mentioned to the planning committee, and I, I don't believe formal board actions even have a calendar. We could do it, but I had suggested the possibility of release or early dismissal days on the Friday, Thursday and Friday before the last day. So it'd be June 21st and June 22nd. We did it once before, um, a few years ago. We were this deep in June. Um, again, this will be one of those, and I talked with Jessica offline via email, this will be one of those some people would be celebrating and some people will see it as a hardship. Um, it was a suggestion from the admin team given how deep we are into June. Um, we have an early release day on the Monday. Hand is really released that whole week for exams. There are so, half yeah. days. That half days the whole week, yeah. So, it um, so the Thursday and Friday we talked about for K to 8. There is a concern about the heat in the buildings. Now we could have a 70 degree June for all we know. Um, but just given how late we are in the season. So it was something I suggested. I don't believe that there is board action is required because we're still going to school that day. The board can always take action on anything, mm -hmm. um, you know, symbolically or not, um, or you know, with justification. So um, if there's you know nothing to be concerned about with that, I'd like to inform parents that we'll do that. But the board is you know. Going that and then will the calendar be updated online? Yeah. 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 Can I ask a, an island question? Sure. So that means that island would have early dismissal Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, all four. You're there Tuesday, yes. But, but all four will be early. Yeah, right? we yeah. keep you aligned. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Would it be an early release on Tuesday? For island, yes. It still counts the school day. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. <laughs> I think that was a question in, when you, in, in the language that you used earlier. You might want to clarify. Oh, sure. All four. Got it. For island, that you know, I kind of feel like, as a board, we shouldn't take a public position on this because it really goes to some of the facilities issues that we've been dealing with and a recognition that some of our buildings are not built the way they are now for that kind of late summer. Uh, well, I mean early summer, but late um, extension of the school year. It just gets too hot for the for the buildings without air conditioning. Mm -hmm especially ones with full length you know windows and all that um, so I would like to move that we add an agenda item um, I don't know which one it would be at this point because we just um, added yep. one. Hang on. agenda no. item 16 uh, um, no. no 18 18 yeah, we have something oh, else the yeah, we, yeah, yeah. yeah it would be uh, item 18 and I'll just move everything else down one. And that would be to, um, for the purpose of a motion uh, to um, make the last two full day, last two days of school half days. To approve the superintendent's the recommendation. Not the last two. Not the last two. Right? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three to four. Yeah. Last three, really. Yeah. Four. Yeah. We can specify the dates. Yeah. Three and a half. Yeah. 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 21, 22, 25. <laughs> three. Well, because 21 and 22 are the only ones that we're making a half days. 25 is right. already a half day. Oh, so yeah. if we move to <coughs> accept this, the superintendent's recommendation to make 21 and 22 and half days. And then Island That's exactly what I meant. And yeah, we, and I hope you got excited with it. We're Island on the 26th? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We already noted the Island 26th. Already on the, on the calendar? Question. I thought so, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you I moved, moved to, to add it. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All comments. Anybody? Abstentions. Okay. Motion carries. So we'll work on that. Any? Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, board member comments. Um, committee reports, planning committee. We met earlier today. Um, the first agenda item was English language learners. Mary Beth Sarr came to talk about the ELL learners she works with in our district. Um, from 2012 to today, the number of students has more than doubled from 17 to 36. Students across all of our schools, and Mary Beth works with individuals and groups. 
Um, Google Docs also allows her to support her students on writing assignments even when she is not with them. The district intervention document has been updated to include English language learners. This document is used by teachers in their classrooms, especially after the ELL student achieves a level four or five and are back in their classrooms without the specific ELL support. Any questions? Um, Frank Henderson and Becky Frost came to talk about the Polson schedule changes in related arts and study hall that were implemented for this year, um, so it's about a year later. Um, as a reminder, the changes and additions to the related arts offerings did not require any additional staff. Overall, these changes were a great success. Most kids were able to get their first or second choices, and no complaints were made, and no student wanted to move or drop their class. Um, study hall was removed for this year and was turned into a 20-minute pride period for all students. Um, some learnings from year one on the related arts choices were to combine some of the offerings into one course. For example, computer coding and robotics will now be technology engineering for next school year. Um, and this will be will continue to be an area that Frank and Becky review for continuous process improvements as they learn from each year. Um, for our third agenda item, we reviewed the building reconfiguration planning timeline. Um, we reviewed the overall draft timeline. It's a Gantt chart. Um, and the close-up view of the Board of Ed actions and timelines, and we will continue to review and update this over the coming weeks and months. Any questions? Thank you, Jess. Um, personnel committee. So the personnel committee um, had its first meeting yesterday. That would be April 9th, and the purpose was to just establish dates and times for future Teamster negotiating meetings, negotiation meetings. Thank you. Policy committee. Um, nothing much to report since our last meeting. We did meet on March 20, 20th and made some suggested changes to the social network policy, which I will be bringing the policy committee for their review at our next meeting on April 24th and then we'll bring it to the board pending their approval as well as a small language change to the organization of the school board by us which I'll keep the board for a first reading of that. Great. Thank you. Finance committee. Uh, we met on March 27th. We reviewed the 2017-2018 budget spending to date and then the forecast. Um, something to, that we talked a lot about was the special education spending, which we might need to monitor to determine if we are going to need to utilize the special reserve fund, special ed reserve fund. Um, additionally, we looked at the areas of commitment and uh, potential savings for the budget, and we'll continue to keep an eye on them to determine if any of the money will be available to be utilized for the ESS position as we discussed and approved in our meeting. Great. Thank you. Learning liaison. Or meeting tomorrow. So I'll update you next week. Thank you. Um, facilities committee. Okay. Uh, the Facilities Committee met on March 27th and also hosted the, uh, a 10-year plan workshop for the board on April 3rd. At the March 27th meeting, the committee first addressed the 10-year plan, focusing on the priority ranking method to be applied. The superintendent and facilities director, along with consultant Chip Phillips from Colliers International, set forth the district's proposed prioritization ranking method. The committee discussed the proposal at length and ultimately adopted it, along with recommendations for how to display the prioritization within the 10-year plan document. The committee then discussed a plan for the upcoming 10-year plan board workshop with the goal of preparing an agenda and assigning roles to ensure an efficient workshop. The committee meeting ended with a discussion of the treatment of security within the plan. The committee agreed that security can be discussed publicly in a general sense, but that the board needs to protect any information that could expose vulnerabilities in a public forum. There is an exception to the FOIA laws for just this purpose, and the committee will work with the district and the board to ensure a balance God bless you, between the appropriate protection of information that could compromise student and staff security if divulged on the one hand and open public discourse and discussion of information that would not compromise security on the other hand. 
The workshop on April 3rd went very well. General feedback was solicited and all present were complimentary of the approach, the 10-year plan spreadsheet document itself, and the huge amount of thought and backup data amassed to support the value judgments to be made by the district and the board. Board members also discussed and understood the need to protect certain sensitive security information from public disclosure. Board members were invited to spend some time reviewing the line items in the proposed uh, ordering of the projects. The goal for all board members is, uh, I'm sorry, the goal is for all board members to have ample opportunity for input over the next couple months, knowing this will ultimately be an adopted board document subject to a board vote. As a uh, chair of the facilities committee, I invited and continue to invite input, ideas, and any questions from uh, board members or the public uh, as this process unfolds going forward. That's it. Great. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, I have one. Yes. So in our planning meeting today, Billy just mentioned that he did have um, a different view as we requested of the um, CIP plan with the HVAC and some of those items pulled out the topic Great. he was going to send to you. So I would just ask that you forward it to us when you get Perfect. It. I will. Thank you so much. Audience response. If you don't mind. Of course, never. Um, I'd, I'd like to talk just a little bit about the balanced scorecard presentation. So I've done this before, um, and I want to say that you guys are on the edge of, of, of truly a paradigm change in the way you manage the district. Um, it, it has the potential to be uh, a very powerful tool, and it's a very bold initiative. Um, that, that Tom and Gail have taken on, and, and I can promise you they've expended a ton of energy to get it here, okay? But they can't do that forever. You folks have to be on board, and you have to help Tom drive the culture. He's not going to be able to do it himself. So I would, I would counsel you that great is the enemy of good. This is not a document that you have to get right right out of the gate, um, but it is a document that you have to believe in, that you have to know about, and you have to be talking about as a board and also with the administration and with the presentations that you receive in. Let the, the district know that this is very much on the front of your mind, and you really will do something that I don't think very many school districts even dream of, and that is finding ways to measure what we do. And the balanced scorecard is the perfect way to do it because it does take into account those intangibles that, um, that organizations like this struggle with, right? It's not a balance sheet problem. Your deliverables are different. The balanced scorecard allows for that difference. So I applaud the effort. Um, I think that, uh, that we're fortunate that, that Tom and Gail have done this and they deserve and they need your vigorous support in this moving forward. So, so please do that. Please understand how powerful and culture shifting this really can be. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> okay. um, um, motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, discussion. 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 Oh, sorry, sorry, discussion. <laughs> I meant to say that. Sorry. I just wanted to call out for attention a generous donation uh, in the amount of $2,975 from Daniel Hand High School PTO to Daniel Hand High School PE Department uh, for phys ed classes at all levels and after school sports. Thank you very much. Thank generous you. donation. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Um, motion to approve the minutes of the March 20th, 2018 Board of Education meeting. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Oh, I wasn't here. Sorry. Abstain. So, um, motion carries. Um, 
motion to approve the retreat minutes from the March 20th Board of Education. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? <coughs> um, so this was discussed. A motion to approve the April 2019 Sicily trip. Yeah. Second. Doesn't need a second. It came out planning. planning discussion. So, did we? Is this one of the ones that they brought to us? And, and I thought so. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we did get a presentation. We did. I, I'm, I'm very happy with all the trips. That we've they had actually so didn't much come to the board table. They, I did. Jessica it. reported on it from planning. That's right. That's right. But we had a we had a presentation earlier this year. Absolutely. From, from different trips. It was like so recapping was how successful it's yeah. been since we put them back <coughs> on the table. Yeah. So I just think the trips are fantastic and <coughs> in favor of Thanks. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Motion carries. Uh, motion to schedule the Daniel Hand High School commencement ceremony. So moved. Second. Well, oh, I'm sorry, discussion. What, what so, so that date is set on a Monday, right? June 25th. June yeah. 25th. Sorry. Yes. Monday, June 25th. So is there any problem that you foresee in the event, Tom, that say there's a thunderstorm again and yes. we have to move it and now Island Avenue is in session? Move it? You mean the date of it? No, we moved it up to, to the daytime last year. The time is still being discussed. The students, yeah, we're just okay. Okay. The students are kind of weighing in. Okay. Um, just for a little context, we had uh, a little movement uh, last, last year or the year before to possibly consider the graduation at the surf club and not on the town green. So Mr. Salutary brought it right to the kids. I don't know if you were involved in that, but I know the time of the graduation he's brought to the students yeah, to yeah. discuss, right? Yeah. So that that is yet to be determined. He hasn't gotten all the feedback yet mm -hmm. from students. Is there a possibility it's going to happen regardless earlier in the day? So um, if it got moved and canceled, is your question from the 26th? That may put us in a position where the time needs to be locked in later. Shouldn't the feedback be from the parents? The kids have to be there anyway, but the parents are working and have other kids. Like, isn't that who he should be? Yeah, They're anecdotally, the ones who be that's what started this, because yeah. anecdotally, the parents, um, and this is anecdotal, have commented that um, this has given them time to spend with their child because they're not going from graduation right to night in hand. Oh, so I see. If there was I didn't after, realize it was that much later before. Yeah. It was 5 o'clock, uh, yeah. and 6 o'clock, I think, was the actual ceremony report around 5. So the kids, there was no time. It's graduation, you're gone. Take yeah. pictures quickly, and we go. So for clarification, it. is the location the green, or the location and the time are both up for discussion? No, location is the green. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the beach is out. Beach is out. Would that have been right. the football field? Yeah, That's what they, uh, proposed. That's what they proposed. Mm -hmm. Only was the time discussed, yeah, correct? Yeah, only the time. Yeah. Okay. And was definitely the time. Emily, did you get a? Um, sense of when they would finalize the time. Was that part of the discussion? And I can find did, out. No, he didn't mention it, but I know that at our last meeting, he was talking about how he was sensing people. Sensing. Can, it, can a tent be erected on that field? Because you can't spike things into on that the surf, I would imagine. But no. I don't know how that would be done. I'm sure you can, but I, 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 I... They've done tents before, but it doesn't protect everybody. Yeah, they, they go beyond. Yeah, but it's, it's the green now. Yeah, but it's going to be that way at the green anyway. I mean, there's always overflow under the, the, beyond the tent. The, the important thing is like the kids wearing the gowns yeah, and being protected the sun. The yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. just because we've taken my turn, I want to be clear. Yeah. It's going to be on the green, yeah. um, and it, it, we will, are voting for Monday, June 25th, time to be determined, and we'll update the board when that occurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So close to Friday. So close. I know. Run snow. I would just suggest, I guess, that time is done sooner rather than later, so that families can make plans. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Now you know, Emily. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so action item 15. Um, motion to accept the resignation of Matt Pappas RV as a member. No, she no, I'm not there yet. Moving. Yeah. We added, don't forget. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Um, to accept the resignation of Matt Pappas RV as, as a member of the Board of Education. So moved. Second. All in favor? Discussion. Oh, so thank you. Discussion, parliamentarian. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Miss Oak. Yes. Wish him well. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, action. Um, motion add. to add. No, we, oh. yeah, right? Okay, to add. To add. Um, an item regarding the contract of employment for two employees to not be renewed for the following year based on a reduction in force upon its expiration at the end of 2017-2018 school year and that the superintendent of schools is directed to advise such persons in writing of this action. Can you read the beginning of that again? Was it a motion to add? Motion add to add an action item. Well, we already did that. Stay so tuned for set. No, we didn't no, do we that didn't yet. Didn't right. 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 So okay. we're adding it now and then, okay. And, okay. So if I explain one thing, why we Please. don't put it on the agenda is for confidentiality reasons. That's why we add it at the meeting right. itself. Right. Right. And per executive session. Right? Yep. Okay. Um, so again, um, the motion is to add an action item regarding the contract for employment for two employees to not be renewed for the following year based upon a reduction in force upon its expiration at the end of the 17-18 school year and that the superintendent of schools is directed to advise such persons in writing of this action. So second. Discussion? Um, whenever we have to do a reduction in force, we someone from the board usually pipes up and says, uh, this is not our favorite thing to do. We appreciate all our teachers. We put a lot of time, and the administration puts a lot of time and effort into hiring good people. Um, and uh, it, does, it gives us no joy whatsoever uh, to have to part with, with uh, excellent faculty. So um, thank you for your service and we wish you well. It's not performance based. It's yeah. not performance based. Thank you for saying that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, so now a motion that the contract for employment yes. for Lori Grace and Allison O'Brien will not be renewed for the following year based upon a reduction in force upon its expiration at the end of the 2017 2018 school year and the superintendent, superintendent of schools is directed to advise such people in writing of this action. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, so item 18 is, what did we say earlier? What did Seth say? No, you said it. <laughs> no, no, this was, was, um, I know, but you, you worded it better than that. Oh, so we are accepting add. the superintendent's recommendation to make June 21st First, and 21st. June 22nd yeah. half yeah. days yeah. for the district. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? Motion and I'll communicate that in an email to all parents tomorrow. <coughs> the school calendar Do you also have to add the 626 half day only island on that? That's already a carryover because okay. they miss school, so you don't have to take action on okay. that. Um, old business. Uh, future agenda items. I have one. Yes. I would request that we get a review of, as much as we can, of the, the district security plan. I'd like to see, I know that we talked about it a bit with facilities, but I'd like for all of us to be familiar sure. with what the plan looks like. Meetings, um, anything else? Sorry. Can, yes, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, meetings of importance real quick oh. because this is an underappreciated line agenda item, um, and I would like to call attention to it once uh, just so it doesn't feel so lonely. But no, but in all seriousness, 
Um, we are fortunate to have a liaison from the Board of Selectmen uh, attending our meeting. Um, it's my understanding that a recent Board of Selectmen meeting, um, it was noted that uh, even though we usually have someone from the Board of Ed there, um, unfortunately someone was not there and um, for that particular meeting and there was something on the agenda um, that addressed uh, education in town. So I just want to ask while you're here, are there any meetings coming up that you know of that have any important agenda items for the for the board to be aware of? Um, I expect that with regards to the Academy School and some community input to pull Island Avenue in um, to that discussion as a variable to figure out a solution that the community can can endorse um, that the board will be taking up the discussion about what kind of guidance do we want to provide to the Board of Education? Um, I think it's a piece of information. We have a special meeting on Thursday. Um, it's not listed as an action item, so we, um, we won't be taking any action per se, um, but I, I expect it to come up on Thursday. Um, Is it an evening meeting? Or? No, we, we did it at the perfect time, noon. High noon. <laughs> The only time the five of us get together. Okay, I just wanted to. Um, so it's the day after the hearing, um, and uh, I, I expect that, that Island is going to come up. Um, and uh, I don't expect any action on Thursday, but. Thank you. When you mean Island's going to come up, you mean when the board will vacate the building officially? I, I think that the, that the board of selectmen are, are going to have to signal to you guys what we think the community wants. Okay. Um, and, and so I would expect it, would, it wouldn't take the form of you have until July 15th to get your stuff out. Um, <laughs> I would expect it would be um, you know, the community desires to, to include that in the planning and therefore can you look at your calendar and tell us the earliest reasonable date that you can make it available back to the town. So, we discussed uh, the planning today. Um, voting on the date to hand over the keys sometime in September. Okay, so I, I think you guys have to decide when that when that turnover date is, um, and we'll try to give you guidance on the urgency. So, so just so I'm clear, I think our plan is to stay the course for, for deciding in September so that we can continue to move along our timeline, unless we hear differently from you. Right, so we asked Tom to give us a recommendation of how, when he thinks he could give it, like the most optimal time to turn it over to us by the end of July so that the board can think about it in August and vote when we get to September. Okay. And we're going to stay on that unless I guess we get some sort of signal or thoughts from you guys that that timeline is not uh, I don't think you're going to get pressure from the board selectmen, <laughs> to be honest. I think you're going to get pressure from the community, so. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. And just so I'm clear, because I have not been plugged in, is this in conjunction with Academy, so a project that would couple with two? So it, is, it has been suggested that to, as a strategy to um, not touch the two baseball fields, that we would bundle Academy School building yeah. with the Island Avenue um, property um, where a builder would be willing to put money into the building and um, in return have that access to that developable property in lieu of this, the, the fields at Academy. We don't know if that can happen. We don't know if that's a practical solution, um, but we do know that it, it's a scenario the community wants to see us explore. And just so I'm clear on how your process works, do you, do, do the, um, the builders give you that timeline of yes we'll do it but it needs to be by here or do you say we're going to develop this property and so we're going to do it by this date I mean the, the I'm confused on what uh, you the, should be confused it's okay, confusing. okay. It's, I, I, I think okay. the answer is we don't know okay um but I, I think the conversation can't happen to any meaningful extent without an expectation of when the property would be available okay right so um, so that happens they, first. They, 
there, there could be a scenario that says the academy building starts sooner, mm -hmm. but there's a known date in the near future where the island property becomes available. Okay. Um, they, I don't think they, they would have to be handed over to a developer on the same day. Okay. Um, but again, so I, I don't just know want to say again for the know. record, I think all nine of us, I uh, speak for all nine of us when we say we're happy to work in cooperation um, with you and, and what will help you. Um, and so just keep us in the loop. Yeah. Great. So, that, so again, I will come at noon. Do not serve lunch. He'll be in there. Don't tell him right. Yeah. But, but <laughs> because it's not a specific agenda item, especially we won't take action. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bruce. Um, so that was future agenda items. Um, meetings. At, oh, thank you. All right. So um, motion to enter into executive session to discuss district security. So moved. Second. Thank you. 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 Thank you.